today we'll be discussing about principal component analysis and the topics which I'm going to cover are so why we actually need PCA principal component analysis what is it why why we have to use it or we may prefer to use it and then the intuition behind the calculation and terminologies of PCA and you know the graphical intuition the for, for the sake of understanding then we would be talking about how PCA is calculated with the graphical representation and then we would also be talking about the math behind PCA and we would be implementing uh, the PCA uh, using Python so let's get started so why we use PCA so we discussed about in our in one of the lectures regarding the curse of dimensionality so what is it since we do have an uh, understanding that having too many dimensions may make our machine learning model complex which might not be desirable so for the sake of simplicity number one number two too many dimensions at times not just make our machine learning model complex but but also it may compromise its efficiency or performance so that's that's the reason you know why we end up uh, using PCA so PCA is basically a dimension reduction technique and that's why just to cope up with the curse of dimensionality we use this dimension reduction technique so now let's see when we say we use PCA as a dimension reduction technique how we actually go about it so consider this particular data set and and you know uh, these are some of the data points and this is the feature 2 this is feature 1 so we can see that this this particular data is spread something like you know in this direction the more the spread is and the other direction the spread is around this so that's how you know we go about calculating the PCA we first see the major spread which is in the, the, this direction and then the other is in this direction so these are the orthogonal components we will be discussing further what do I mean by orthogonal components so yeah so let's see so let's make this spread here so I have made this line which is the first principal component and this particular orange line is the second principal component so this is how the components actually depict the spread or uh, in actual terms the variance of the data so in this way these two dimensions or principal components are, are made and note that you know these are right angle uh, to each other and orthogonal relationship with each other so so this is how we end up having first principal component and second principal component now let's transform and this is how we transform so what we did was we had this axis and then th these were the principal components so we would transform our data uh, in tune with the principal components so here we have just transformed the axis and now our data is defining these components so the, the first principal component is the significant one so always remember that in the calculation of PCA the first component should be the uh, most significant one when I say most significant that means it it should define most of the spread of the data like in this case so if you see the spread the maximum spread is, is in this direction so this is the significant component uh, so let's get back to the transformation so here we have transformed our data now the next step would be the projection so what we would be doing we would be projecting these so we so we have decided that this first principal component right here is, is our significant component and, and defines most of the variance of the data so what we would do is we would make projection of all these points on this on this particular uh, line which is basically the first component so we would be making such projections so this point will be projected on this line something like this here this point would be here this point here so in this way you know so here the projection of this point would come on this line a bit like this so we would have a picture something like this so this these these red lines and these red dots basically depict the projection of all these points and now in this way we have got all the points projected on the significant component or the first component PC1 
principal component one. So what we what we try to do is we try to minimize the residuals. So this is the residual distance. So why we have projected on the first component component because the residual distance was relatively low and then maximize the variance. So this is again the criteria of choose, choosing the uh, significant component or the first component which is uh, which is the highly significant component. So as you see this can this component for example we make a single component like this this component can't be as termed as a significant component why because it, it is not projecting the most of the variance of the data see so are the variance of the data or, or the spread of the data is not in this direction rather it's in this direction so that's how a significant component is calculated and only only that component may be termed as significant which actually covers the maximum variance so let's get back so the maximum variance is covered of the red dots in this direction so yeah we have transformed also and then we have made the projection of all the points on the first component so what we would get is something like this in, in an isolated way and we would end up something like this so this is the projected data points on PC1 which is principal component 1 so we had something like this and then we uh, further made the pro projection of the points onto the PC1 which is the principal component 1 which is the significant dimension so now uh, as you can notice that previously we had two dimensions but after this projection we have got a single dimension all the points are in the straight line so data is transformed into a single dimension so this is how you know the intuition intuition behind how principal components are calculated and what's going on behind the scenes of course we would be covering the math but this is the intuition how the components actually come into play so we do notice that our data has been transformed into a single dimension some points to note are so there might be several dimensions and we may get many principal components of course uh, in in our example we just had a two dimensional uh, data but that not maybe the actual case actual actually you may have several columns or features or dimensions so the principal component would be not just two but there may be many pc1 pc2 pc3 pc4 and so on and so forth but point to notice that PC1 which is the principal component 1 is the most significant component and actually uh, covers most of the data the variance of the or spread of the data so and and you know it goes down like this that you know after PC1 PC2 would be significant and then PC3 and PC4 so if we if we do want to select uh, the components so we would we would be going uh, in this direction like we can select PC1 and PC2 and ignore PC3, PC4 or something like this. That depends on the values which we will be discussing in the subsequent series. But yeah, so PC1 is the most significant component. That's that's the point to uh, remember. And the other point to note is that we need to be mindful that the components should be orthogonal. That is 90 degree to each other and totally independent from each other. So there should be no similarity in in any of the components so that uh, that's that's how we actually you know remove similar features from a data so if there are two columns which are you know highly correlated so in this way we can also uh, get rid of them this was the you know uh, intuition behind PCA in subsequent in the part two of this lecture we would be covering how PCA is calculated and then the math behind the PCA and then further the implementation of PC in Python.